result is one of the best decisions you could ever make. Yes. And that's why it's important to ask your doctor questions to avoid any possible surprises. So today, we're helping you out with some of those medical questions, because this is What's Up, Doc? Pfizer yeah. senior medical advisor, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall, is here and ready to dive into the mailbag. It's great to have you back. It's great to be here. Always great to be here. <laughs> we love having you. Well, we got plenty of questions. The first question comes from Carmen, who's 58 years young. She has a question <laughs> regarding menopause. She writes, is it true your body is full forced into early menopause if you've had a hysterectomy at an early age? Oh, wow. Yeah, that yeah. is definitely a good question, Carmen. But Dr. Frida, before you answer, can you tell us what the difference is between menopause mm -hmm and perimenopause. Okay. So a lot of people don't know the difference between those two things. So that's I a wonder, great, yes, I uh, so that's a great <laughs> thing to straighten out. So menopause is a natural biologic process whereby the ovaries stop releasing eggs mm -hmm. and you no longer have menstrual periods. Mm. Okay. So that's the basis. Now this can happen in your 40s or your 50s. The average age in the U.S. is 52. But menopause doesn't happen all at once. So the months or even years leading up to menopause is called perimenopause. Think of it as the menopause transition. Mm. This is the time when the ovaries gradually begin to make less estrogen. It usually starts in a woman's 40s, but it can start in her 30s or even earlier. Now, during the transition, you may experience irregular periods, vaginal dryness, hot flashes, and mood changes. Mm. So symptoms vary from woman to woman. Not everybody experiences it the same, mm -hmm. but skipping periods skipping periods during perimenopause is common and it is expected. So I want to say out loud, perimenopause periods also tend to be on a shorter cycle, so they may be a little bit different. And despite these irregular periods, though, pregnancy is still possible. Ooh, good mm. to know. It's not <laughs> open like Everybody's no. started paying attention. Uh, <laughs> okay. So make sure that you're taking appropriate precautions yeah. um, if you do not wish to become pregnant. Got okay. it. Right. Thank you. So let's get back to Carmen's question mm -hmm. regarding your body being forced into early menopause after having a hysterectomy. Okay, so let's start with what is a hysterectomy? So remember, yes. hysterectomy is a surgical operation to remove all or part of the uterus. Um, this stops women from getting their periods. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you will experience those other symptoms that we talked about um, that go along with menopause following a hysterectomy depends on whether or not your ovaries are removed during the surgery, oh. okay? So if your ovaries are not removed during a hysterectomy, they can still make hormones so you may not encounter other menopause symptoms right away. Okay. If both ovaries are removed, however, you may immediately encounter menopausal symptoms because the hormone levels drop quickly without the ovaries. Mm -hmm. And your symptoms may actually even be stronger than they would be in a natural menopause. Wow. wow. So Carmen should talk to her doctor about what's planned for her in her surgery and know that there are treatment options available if she does start to experience um, those symptoms and she can talk to her doctor about those as well. Okay, so good. All right, what our next question comes from Jacqueline, who wrote in saying this, I have recently been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. There is very little information about this, and I'm wondering if there is any way to reverse this and what the chances, if any, are of becoming pregnant with this diagnosis, mm -hmm. Dr. Frida. So not a lot of people have heard about polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me level set on that one. So it's a set of symptoms that are related to hormonal imbalances that actually interfere with ovulation. Mm. Oh, okay. Women with PCOS have higher than normal levels of androgens, which is also kind of known as the male hormones. Okay. Okay. This can lead to irregular or missed periods. It can cause other physical symptoms like excess hair on your body or your face. It can cause acne. And some women who have PCOS also develop cysts on one or both of their ovaries. Okay. Now, to answer Jacqueline's question, PCOS can make it harder to get pregnant, and it can increase your risk of pregnancy complications, and miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is no cure for PCOS, but there are several options to help increase the chances or improve the chances of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So there's medication, there's weight loss, IVF, there's surgery, among other um, options. So she should talk to her doctor about what's going on with her and what options might be right for her. Okay. All right. So good. So good. So good. Well, 
thank you so much, Dr. Frida, for stopping by and educating us, having this conversation with us. We truly appreciate it. Yeah. Make sure you all visit Dr. Frida's website, gethealthystayhealthy.com. It's a great resource. And for more information, please head on over to therealcom Now we got to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more of The Real.